This is Detective Recapped. Today, I'm going to explain a drama film called That Obscure Object of Desire. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. Times are turbulent and violent in France. There's been a sequence of terror attacks raining upon it with no end in sight. But this story isn't about that. It's about Matteo Faber, an aging man who has found himself far too over his head with a vexing young woman. Matteo drops by a train company in Seville, Spain, to book a ticket to Paris. There are no more seats for that day, so he has to resort to leaving the following day instead. After the little errand, he drives back home to his expansive manse. Inside the house, his butler Martin directs him to one of the rooms while reporting that Conchita has recently left the house. Inside the room, Martin investigates its state and makes a few deductions. There is a pillow with streaks of blood, but Matteo assures him that it originates from a mere nosebleed. Then, a pair of shoes that indicate that Conchita left barefoot. Finally, there is a pair of wet panties, showing that she was scared to death. Matteo instructs Martin to burn all of it. The next day, Matteo and Martin make their way to the train by car, but they are surprised when the car in front of them suddenly explodes. With the flaming spectacle before them, Matteo and Martin step out, making a nonchalant comment about the latest attack. Martin escorts Matteo to the train. Inside one of the passenger cars, Matteo is joined by a young mother and her daughter, along with an old man named Vincent de Olargue. Matteo recognizes him as a judge from his visits to his cousin, Edouard Focant. Vincent knows Matteo as well from Edouard's stories. The final member of their passenger car is a little person by the name of Pieral. Just as the train is about to ride off, a young, beautiful, and enigmatic woman approaches it. She has a black eye and a bandaged forehead. Matteo spots her from the train window and whispers something to the train personnel. Later, when the woman is trying to board the train, Matteo emerges from the passageway and splashes a bucket of water onto the woman. The woman is annoyed and hops on a different train car. Back at Matteo's passenger car, the other travelers become curious about his actions. Pierrel especially is intrigued, saying that he is a psychology professor. Matteo starts explaining that the woman is deplorable and to prove his point, he tells the story of how he met her. Matteo was at the court visiting his judge cousin, Edouard. During lunch break, they retreated to Matteo's house to eat. There, Matteo met Conchita, the woman who he rudely splashed water with in present time. Conchita was recently hired as Matteo's maid. He immediately noticed how Conchita seemed to be clueless about fulfilling her role and observed that she had smooth, unscathed hands. Despite her lack of competence as his maid, Matteo was immensely aroused by her. That same evening, Matteo requested Conchita to come up his room. There, Matteo inquired more about her. Conchita went on to tell Matteo that she originally lived in Paris and that she was a dancer. Then, Matteo made his move and kissed her. His action immediately left Conchita disheartened, so she left the room. The next day, Conchita left the mansion and was nowhere to be found. Matteo paid it no mind and decided to go on a stroll during the afternoon. In the park, three young and rugged-looking men stopped him and pulled a knife on him. They demanded money, so Matteo handed him his whole wallet. But to his surprise, they declined and instead requested for an exact amount of 800 francs. After the bizarrely peaceful robbery, Matteo went to have coffee at an outdoor cafe. There, he's approached by Conchita, who was curiously walking alongside the three robbers who took Matteo's money. It was strange how pleasant their exchange was even though Matteo had just been robbed. Matteo insisted that Conchita keep the money after learning that she and her friends were to use it for travel fare. Conchita mentioned that she'll be using the money to visit her mother, and Matteo asked where they live. After that fleeting encounter, Conchita purposely dropped her handkerchief on the ground for Matteo. He picked it up and greedily breathed it in. Hooked as he was, Matteo decided to visit Conchita the soonest that he could. In Paris, Matteo met Conchita and her mother. After learning that he was the one who gave them the money, Conchita's mother welcomed him. And with a pleasant attitude, Matteo handed her even more money to help them out. Suddenly, the woman mentioned that she had to leave, so Conchita and Matteo were left alone. Conchita kept arousing Matteo, and the man was more enthralled by her than ever. He explains to his fellow travelers that he was completely enchanted by Conchita, and he went to visit her there in Paris nearly every day. During one of his visits, Matteo witnessed Conchita dancing the flamenco. 
With passion in her brow and thunder at her feet, she captivated the spellbound Matteo. He was so absorbed by her movements that he almost didn't notice the guitarist in the room. The guitarist was Conchita's friend, the same man who pulled a knife on him. Visibly annoyed, Matteo undermined the man as he left the room. Conchita seemed to be giving Matteo mixed signals on purpose, kissing him one moment and pulling him away in the next. While the two of them were sitting together, Conchita's mother suddenly came into the room. The woman was fearful of others and devoutly religious, and she frequently cited the dangers of the outside world and her efforts to protect her daughter. Matteo whispered to Conchita, asking why she was being coy with him. Conchita then revealed that she is a virgin. Later on, Matteo tasked Martin with bringing Conchita's mother to the house. There, Matteo asked for her blessing and said he wanted to propose to her daughter. Matteo then handed her an envelope of cash and assured her that when Conchita marries him, he will look after the two of them. He asked her to bring Conchita there the day after tomorrow. The woman seemed pleased by this and made her way home to deliver the news to her daughter. When the day came for Conchita to rendezvous with Matteo, Conchita's friend knocked on Matteo's door with a letter. In the letter, she wrote that she was supposed to give herself to him, but had since then been offered when he attempted to buy her from her mother. She further stated that he'll never see her again. Frustrated, Matteo crumpled the paper and threw it away. When Matteo headed to their home in Paris, he was surprised to find that Conchita and her mother were no longer there. For the next two months, Matteo had been struck with a languorous spell. At a local cafe, he confided in his cousin, Edouard, about this, and Edouard's advice was for him to sleep with other women. However, Matteo explained that he had never been with a woman who he did not love passionately, and the only casual relationships he's had could be counted in one hand. Then, the two of them exited the cafe to go for lunch. However, when Edouard was getting his coat from the coat check girl, he was surprised to find that the woman manning the booth was none other than Conchita herself. Edouard knew that he would want some time alone with her, so he abruptly bid his goodbye. Conchita and Matteo talked over the coat and hat booth, but were interrupted by the cafe manager who wanted Conchita to focus on her job. Suddenly, Conchita removed her apron and decided to quit then and there. Matteo asked if she'd like a drink and where she'd like to go. Curiously, Conchita decided on staying there. Conchita and Matteo discussed the marriage proposal and Conchita's abrupt reaction to it. When the waiter came to take their order, the manager informed Matteo that they won't be serving Conchita given the way she disrespected their establishment. The two of them went outside instead. There, Conchita explained that she was furious with him during the two months they'd not seen each other. But all that anger had changed into joy now that she's seen him again. Matteo then mentioned a country house and Conchita told him that she will be his mistress there. In the country, Martin informed Matteo that the power plant had just been sabotaged and the power was out in the whole area. The lovebirds would then proceed into Matteo's country house, then went straight into the bedroom. There, they kissed passionately and lovingly. However, Conchita saw a picture of a woman inside the room. When she asked Matteo about it, he replied that it was a picture of his late wife, who has been dead for seven years now. When Conchita discovered that the room they were in was formerly his wife's, she demanded to be placed in a different room. Matteo followed suit and they went to the room across the hall. To highlight Conchita's elusive nature, two actresses play her character interchangeably. This artistic choice also serves as a reminder that the whole story is told through Matteo's eyes, through his memory, and no matter how reliable one's memory may be, they will never be the actual events in their entirety. In the new room, Conchita changed her clothes, and so did Matteo. When Conchita emerged from the bathroom, she was wearing a long, white gown. She generously flashed her breasts and allowed Matteo to touch them. However, as if to tease him even more, Conchita removed his hand and said she wasn't in the mood. At that point, Matteo's had enough of Conchita's games, so he tried forcing his way with her. But, much to his surprise, Conchita was wearing a pair of breeches that could only be described as a convoluted contraption. Matteo spent over 10 minutes trying to get them off her, but eventually, he resigned himself to defeat with tears in his eyes. Conchita then embraced him, comforting him and saying she doesn't like what she's doing, either. That she has to do this, or else he'll tire of her once he gets what he wants and leaves. Still, Conchita offered to go and live with him, all while assuring that it will happen one day. At this point in the story, the train travelers are all on the edge of their seats. Conchita and Matteo had gotten used to living together. 
In spite of this, Conchita still hadn't given herself to Matteo. Conchita asked him why he was insistent that they make love and quite reasonably. Matteo answered that it's only a natural thing to do for people who are in love. At home, Conchita and Matteo frequently slept naked, and yet, they didn't do anything. The experience was completely frustrating for Matteo. Suddenly, there was a loud commotion down the street that frightened Matteo and Conchita. The radical attackers had gunned down several civilians, and it's revealed that they're the same ones who had just recently blown up a plane. Conchita was terrified and decided to leave the room. However, it's revealed that she left just so she could let her friend in. Matteo caught her doing this, and he kicked out the both of them from his house and told them never to return. After a few months, Matteo was once again confiding in Edouard. Matteo asked him for a favor. He wanted Edouard to find a way to stop him from seeing Conchita. Edouard's hesitant at first since he felt that Matteo would end up hating him for that, but he eventually complied. After some time, Conchita and her mother were deported back to Spain, where they were originally from. Following the advice of his cousin, Matteo decided to go for a vacation in a different country. He asked Martin to spin him around and with his closed eyes, he landed his pointing finger randomly on the world map on his wall. His finger landed on Singapore. He told Martin to prepare for their journey. While Matteo is telling the story, the psychology professor accurately guesses that he did not go to Singapore and instead followed Conchita to her hometown in Spain. Matteo eventually found Conchita one night, and they joyously reunited. Conchita invited Matteo to a club named Gurugu, where she worked as a dancer. There, Matteo and Conchita talked about being together once again. Matteo enjoyed Conchita's passionate dancing, and she left the stage for a moment. She explained to Matteo that she was required to take a half-hour nap before her next performance. With Conchita gone, one of her friends suddenly introduced herself to Matteo. She told him that Conchita wasn't actually taking a nap, then instructed Matteo to go upstairs to find out what Conchita was actually doing. There, he saw that Conchita was dancing naked in a room full of men. Matteo stormed in furiously to chase them all out. As Conchita put on some clothes, the two of them plunged into an argument. Conchita kept flipping the script on Matteo, telling him that it was she who loved him, while he'd just tire of her once he got what he wanted. Ever Conchita's fool, Matteo promised her that he will give her anything she wanted, and thus the two remained locked in a perpetual cycle of love and violence. Soon, Conchita had a house of her own, with an ornate iron gate at the entrance, all of which was paid for by Matteo. Matteo then gave Conchita the key to the house, along with the deed that was already in her name. Conchita was overjoyed and told Matteo she will entertain him in the night of tomorrow. Matteo came to Conchita's house in the hopes of finally consummating their relationship. However, he was shocked to see that Conchita would not let him inside. Instead, she cruelly told him that the entire time they were together, she was just using him for his money and that he made her sick. After that awful display, Conchita demanded Matteo to go away. She then took her friend, the guitarist from before, and told Matteo that he is her lover. And to fully drive the used man away, the two of them made love right in front of Matteo. He left, not wanting to witness the act with his own eyes. Unfortunately for Matteo, the night was a curse that kept on giving. Not only did Conchita leave him bereft, but he would also be robbed yet again by a gang of terrorists, and with his car hijacked, he was forced to walk home. The next morning in Matteo's house in Seville, Conchita visited Matteo to gloat even further. However, Matteo finally broke and viciously slapped her around. Conchita tried once again to make excuses, saying that the entire scene the previous night was just an act and that the man he saw was actually homosexual. However, Matteo did not stop beating her until she was bleeding. Then, Matteo left the house to buy a train ticket back home to Paris. After the long and winding story at the train reached its violent crescendo, Matteo is surprised to see the psychology professor suddenly moving away from him. He doesn't understand why until he turns around and sees Conchita. Before he could react, Conchita throws a bucket of water at him. She then runs off, and Matteo quickly follows her. Finally, he has her cornered in the bathroom. Moments later, Conchita and Matteo leave the train station together, having seemingly reconciled for the nth time. In a strange turn of events, Matteo and Conchita are once again together in Paris. During one afternoon stroll, they hear a public service announcement over the mall's PA stating that the terror group have become larger and more aggressive. Matteo and Conchita encounter a woman cross-stitching behind the glass window pane of a store. Peculiarly, the fabric the woman is working with is a dirty white cloth stained with blood and dirt. 
Matteo says something inaudible to Conchita and she gets upset by what he said and runs off. As Matteo chases her, a bomb goes off in the mall, killing Matteo and his obscure object of desire. As the great director Luis Buñuel's last film, he decides to go out with a bang, both literally and figuratively. In the bizarrely beautiful final scene, Luis Buñuel gives us a shot of the tapestry being stitched whole as if to say to the world that his work is done. But at the same time, Luis Buñuel decides to end his illustrious career with a scene that depicts a bomb going off, killing the very same characters he had created as if to say that his time is over, telling the viewers his farewell. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.